Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about argument prefix matching, which uh, may come as a surprise to many people. I've I've seen this come up in lots of places and people are like, why does this work? So I'm going to explain what's going on and show you an example in Python and how you can turn it off if it is being problematic and also why you might want to turn it off. Turn it off. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so... The context of prefix matching is in positional flag arguments in uh, GNU long ops. So if you're not familiar with what GNU long ops are, um, it's where you use like dash dash and then some name. So one example is git init template, uh, which you can pass a initialization template for a git repo. Um, or you can pass the empty string and it will not use a template. Um, Another example is, uh, let's say we touch a file, um, we can do git commit dash dash message. This is the message, message, okay, whatever, doesn't really matter. Um, this is a GNU long opt and uh, by default, it supports prefix matching for most programs. There are, there are some which don't, um, it depends on how the argument parsing is implemented, of course. Um, but the the result of this is that you can use any prefix of this that is uniquely identifiable. So if you want to mess with people, you can do git commit dash dash mess <laughs> and um, that works just fine. This matches a unique prefix of message and so the argument parsing framework recognizes that and expands this out to the uh, the full argument here. Now this doesn't work for everything, of course, uh, especially if your tool is written in Bash or something because implementing uh, prefix matching is somewhat complicated. So usually you'd lean on a library to do this. Uh, and in Python, this is supported through the argparse library. So if we write a um, small Python script, <clears throat> import argparse, Gonna make a main function parser equals arg parse dot argument parser. Uh, let's say we add a name argument, um, and we'll make it required. And this will just be our old uh, hello hello uh, <laughs> kind of a hello world program. If name equals main is system exit main. And so if we go to run this program, Python 3 t.py, and we do name Anthony, see that it says hello, hello, Anthony. But we can actually do dash dash n, and that also works as well because it is an unambiguous prefix of, of this argument. If you have something that makes it not an unambiguous prefix, such as parser.add argument uh i don't know <laughs> some other argument uh action equals store true uh if not args dot no op something like that so now uh this is no longer an unambiguous prefix and so our price actually tells you that this is an ambiguous option because dash dash n could match name or no op and so you have to you know, use an unambiguous prefix of that argument now, sometimes this behavior is undesirable, and so you might want to turn that off. And fortunately, if you go to Python 3 argparse, and we look at the argument parser here, uh, argument parser, uh, there is a allow abrev equals false option to uh, argument parsing, and this allows you to turn off that prefix matching. Allow a brief equals false. And so now if we try to run the same program again, you'll see that it doesn't know what dash dash na is. It didn't match name. And so it's telling us that we're missing a, a required argument here. And so this is how you can turn it off. Uh, now, <laughs> I guess I'll tell you some, some interesting stories about when um, prefix matching can be undesirable. One example of this is actually in pre-commit. Um, just cd into some repository. Uh, Precommit has a dash dash all files option in um, 
in the run command, which often you can do pre-commit run dash dash all the files, and it'll run every hook across all of the files in your repository. Now, because of prefix matching for a while, this worked if you just did pre-commit run dash dash all, and I think it works again now. I think I've accidentally re-enabled this. Um, and many people just assumed the flag was all and didn't know that it was actually dash dash all files. And so at some point I added a flag, um, it log dash g it was like allow something uh, oh not there allow missing config no anyway at some point there was another dash dash there was a dash dash allow flag and because all files and allow have the same all prefix uh it broke those commands that we're running with dash dash all. So that is one reason that you might want to turn it off because you might break people's workflows that are unintentionally using prefix matching to run your command. Uh, another example is in PyTest. PyTest is a uh, testing framework that supports a bunch of plugins. And we actually turned off abbreviation in PyTest because um, plugins would often introduce new functionality that would break other uh, arguments because they no longer had an unambiguous prefix and so that might be another case where you would want to turn it off um, but anyway I thought I would point out the uh, prefix options and as well as how and why you might want to turn them off and hopefully this was useful if there are additional things you would like me to explain leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one